Welcome to MA3D1, the Warwick module on fluid dynamics. Um, this video is about the definition of a fluid. You might ask, what is so complicated about this definition? We all would agree that substances like water are fluids. Water and air are the most common fluids that we have around us. But uh, the uh, definition does not end there. And there are other substances that might or perhaps might not be classified as fluid, uh, as fluids. And uh, let me give you let me give you a few examples of those. For example, uh, the sand in this sand clock. It's clearly flowing from the top chamber to the bottom chamber. Is that a fluid or is that not a fluid? Uh, in addition, I have here toothpaste. Now. Toothpaste normally doesn't flow, but I, if I squeeze on it, if I squeeze on the tube containing the toothpaste, you can see that the toothpaste came out of the tube and uh, in the process it did flow. And finally, I have my third example, the shaving foam, which I got from a local superstore and uh, let's see if I can make that flow. I press this button, a certain amount of it comes out of the tube, uh, out of this container and uh, also did flow. So normally would you call um, toothpaste, sand and shaving gel as a fluid? And before we move on, let me uh, ask about one more substance, ice. Now our common experience with ice in the refrigerator that it is, is that it is not a fluid, it doesn't flow, it's a solid. But uh, I would like you to think mo a little more about this and we'll return back to the question of whether ice is a fluid or not at the end of this video. So what is our definition of a fluid? Our definition is that a fluid is a continuum substance which cannot withstand shear stress without continually deforming. It's written up on the screen. Now you may ask, there are certain, you may point out that there are certain terms that are not, that not common, commonly understood. For example, what is a continuum substance? What is shear stress? And what does one mean by continually deforming? Uh, we are going to discuss each of these terms in a, quite some detail uh, in chapter one, which this is the beginning of. But before we go on, I want to give you some uh, preliminary understanding of what these terms mean. So, for example, a continuum substance is a substance that is infinitely divisible, which means you can take smaller and smaller portions of the same substance and the portions have the same properties as the original substance. That's what one means by a continuum substance. Uh, to understand the concepts of shear stress and uh, what one means by continually deforming, let's use uh, a sketch, the Newtonian sketch. In the Newtonian sketch, imagine you have a fluid sandwiched between two walls. In fact, uh, we don't know whether it's a fluid, we only know it's a, some substance. And it is sandwiched between two walls. And uh, now we will also imagine that this substance sticks to the walls. Uh, so when the walls move, the substance adjacent to the wall also moves with it or it is somehow glued to it. Now, let's imagine applying a force on the walls in the direction shown. We will take uh, the horizontal direction to be the x-axis and the vertical direction to be the y-axis. And now we have applied a 
not a not not only a force but attraction on the top plate in the along the positive x direction and on the bottom plate along the negative x direction so here sigma this is the greek letter sigma stands for applied traction which is a force per unit area also because uh, it this force uh, attempts to shear the substance sandwiched between the walls this will turn out to be a shearing stress or a shear stress now the response of the substance to uh, the applied force is that uh, the substance will deform let's imagine that the bottom wall is held fixed and the top wall is allowed to move then every little particle of the substance let's say at the points that i'm drawing right now will displace a certain amount approximately as shown in this picture as i'm drawing so here the displacement of these particles i will label it by this symbol which is the greek letter c is given by some proportionality constant that could change with time gamma of t times y where remember y is the vertical y is the vertical coordinate so uh, in other words the displacement of the particles is proportional to the distance from the bottom wall because the bottom wall is held fixed in the way we are doing this experiment and uh, the top wall is allowed to move so the substance in between somehow uh, the displacement is distributed between what happens at the bottom wall and what happens at the top wall and the distribution is linear so here c is the displacement and it's given by gamma of t times y now according to uh, the definition of de shear shear is a kind of deformation which you can write as when neighboring particles of a substance do not displace the same amount so the rate of change of displacement with displace uh, with location of those particles is the shear and that according to our simple picture is just gamma of t so the proportionality constant gamma of t is a shear uh, is the shear experienced by the substance and uh, it is a measure of the deformation of the substance all right now let's suppose let me make some space let's suppose that uh, the substance is a solid if you wait long enough in other words as t goes to infinity what you will find is that the solid deforms and then maintains its deformed shape which means that the deformation the shear approaches a constant limit that's what one means by a solid in contrast for a fluid even after you wait for a long time uh, gamma of t continues to increase 
usually it is proportional to t in other words the shear is given by sorry a proportionality constant gamma dot of t times t this proportionality constant is the rate of shear so what one means by a substance continually deforming under a shear stress is that its rate of shear is perhaps a constant or at least that uh, the shear continues to increase as uh, with time. Now before we close this uh, topic I want to introduce something called a Newtonian fluid which comes from this Newtonian sketch that I drew. A Newtonian fluid is one where sigma is equal to mu times gamma dot so this is the shear stress this is the shear rate or rate of shear they are proportional to each other everywhere in the fluid with the proportionality constant being the coefficient of dynamic viscosity. In other words, if you apply a stronger force, then the fluid will uh, continually deform at a rate, at a stronger rate proportional to the force that you applied. Uh, this is how a Newtonian fluid is uh, defined and one would now like to take this simple picture of a fluid. You apply a force on the fluid and it deforms and now somehow distribute it, distribute this picture throughout the continuum of the fluid. All right. That is what mathematically modeling a fluid is all about and that's the topic that we are uh, going to cut continue in chapter one this is the beginning of chapter one so let me now circle back to the question I asked you about when uh, whether a substance like ice is a fluid or a solid and obviously from our common experience with ice in the refrigerator it feels like a solid you apply a force on it it might deform a minute amount but then it doesn't flow it doesn't continue to deform but uh, it's on, I would argue that it's only a matter of scale because you would have situations like an ice stream in a glacier. An ice stream is a region of fast flow in a glacier. So this picture is from this website antarcticglaciers.org. Uh, this glacier is kilometers deep the layer of ice that forms this glacier is kilometers deep and uh, there are these streams that are found in Antarctica or also uh, to some extent in Greenland where there are these regions of fast flowing ice so this is how ice is transported from the continent of Antarctica to the ocean surrounding it and this is what maintains the level of ice in Antarctica this is also what is causing the melting of the glaciers as these uh, ice streams transport uh, ice from the continent to the ocean where they melt. That's what is causing depletion of ice is in, uh, in Antarctica. If you are, uh, oh. here's a sort of a map of the ice streams. Uh, which are shown in purple in this uh, picture. 
So, in closing, I would say the following, and this is how uh, the definition of a fluid also works. That in the beginning, we will treat substances like water and oil or air as our uh, model fluids and will develop a theory for their deformation and for their flow, uh, a mathematical theory of their deformation and flow. But once the theory is defined, we will examine the assumptions underlying this theory and then we will argue that, uh, that many more substances, perhaps sand, perhaps gels, pastes, even ice, under the right circumstances satisfy the uh, the premise, the axioms of this theory and therefore would also qualify uh, to be described by this theory and therefore a fluid is going to be any substance that obeys the theory that we are going to derive. Right. So that's the end of this video. I will see you in the next one.